Hi everyone and welcome. I'm really excited to uh, introduce you to Ola and Eric. Uh, at the moment, I only talk with two people taking playoffs, taking part at Gamification Europe. Um, it's quite exciting for lots of different reasons, and we'll get to some of those in this. But first of all, I'd really like to find out a bit more about the two of you. So Ola, could you tell us a little bit about who you are, your gamification background? Yeah, of course. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Ola. I'm working at the Krakow University of Economics. And here with my students, uh, I'm making some projects related to basically organizational behavior studies, uh, gamification or uh, serious games. I'm also working uh, on my PhD about implementing gamification in uh, enterprises. Uh, but basically, what about during Gamification Europe is the um, Toolbox for Creativity project, uh, which I created, uh, which we created with uh, with Eric. So, so my my partner in the, in this speech. Fantastic! Well, perfect segue, Eric. Uh, hello, Pete. Hello, Ola, and yeah, excited to be here. Thank you for this opportunity. And uh, my name is Eric. I was born in Venezuela. I'm an Irish citizen, and I focus, well, professionally, in the study of behavior through games. More particularly, my research with Trinity College is to develop a technology, a piece of technology that will allow me to streamline some predictions about behavior through the use of technology. And more particularly, with Ola here in the University of Economics, Krakow. We are using the game Toolbox for Creativity in order to uh, study and uh, to confirm some of our theories regarding how the students progress in their learning by creating games, not so much playing game, but creating them. And the results so far are very promising. Ooh, so this sounds like uh, a good time to ask you what we can look forward to in your talk in a few weeks' time. Sure. Uh, Ola, you want to start with that one? Because Ola has been di dealing directly with the students. You see, my Polish is named Nieso <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of, uh, of course, uh, we are basically after first week, so first iteration of our project with students. And we've got already uh, really a lot of ideas uh, of serious games related to some uh, learning outcomes. The students uh, want to um, add to their games. So, for example, we've got one game which is really complicated for now, and this is only uh, after first iteration, uh, in which students have a board game um, in which people uh, have their own uh, chronotype. So they are like morning person or afternoon person and uh, if they are morning person they can only perform some tasks in the game uh, if it is a morning in a game or uh, they can receive points for tasks only if this is uh, this time of the day they can uh, perform tasks so like um, for now we've got um, many ideas some of them uh, very complicated, may maybe too complicated, and we are trying to, to work with students to focus on the uh, learning outcome they choose to create a serious game uh, which will be connected to, to this learning outcome. That's fantastic. I love the idea of chronotypes and when working when your peak time of the day is, <laughs> whereas when you're organizing a conference, it seems to be 24 hours a day. <laughs> <laughs> 25. <laughs> 25. Eric, is there anything you'd like to add to that? Uh, sure. One of the kind of leading theories that I used when I was designing this game is that through designing and controlling the elements of the game, students will get to understand much better the learning outcome. Now, this is perhaps nothing new when it comes to the use of games in education. Uh, researchers, particularly in MIT, Michel Resnick has used this when it comes to the use of coding games. Uh, he calls it coding to learn, but in this case, we are using board games, and board games provide other affordances that digital games do not provide. They are better, they're just different uh, affordances, 
and we are maximizing this. And the interesting part is that even during the times of Corona and social distancing, we are using these type of games and it seems to be working. So this is something really interesting as well that we would like to share with the people during the presentation. Oh, that's great. I love a bit of topicality. I mean, this year's Gamification Europe is online, but uh, could you perhaps both tell me about your experiences of past gamification conferences? Yeah, of course. Uh, like uh, my first Gamification Europe conference was last year, and uh, I can say it inspired me uh, to check uh, or to introduce serious games to my classes with students because uh, I remember a Project Ninja's game and One Way Ticket to the Fun and I really, I really love that games. Uh, and also, of course, uh, I met uh, Eric at the Gamification Europe conference and that is how our cooperation starts. That's fantastic, Eric. And yes, it was me. It was my first gamification conference. The fact that we are here having this conversation is an outcome of um, that moment back in 2019. And um, something that perhaps, well, I don't know, maybe some people know, some people don't, is that I find it really difficult to walk into a room full of people that I don't know and start a conversation. So something that I decided to do when I went to the conference is I want to maximize my opportunity to be there in the middle of this room with uh, so many interesting people and I had like this little game that I was playing with myself that I had to talk to somebody somebody different somebody new every 20 minutes and uh, it was the time I looked at Ola and I was like okay target go and talk to her and uh, <laughs> so that explains why you kept interrupting the talks every 20 minutes outrageous <laughs> Well, every 20 minutes in the breakout rooms, not due to the, <laughs> not due to the presentations. And uh, yeah, so that's how we started talking. And then we realized that we both lived in Krakow and we were, you know, working in similar areas. We decided to keep in touch after the conference. We used one of my games during the class. Uh, which class was it? Uh, this is before Corona and it was yeah, you know, with the it was, students. It was Industry uh, four zero. Yeah, we, you've created a game uh, related to Industry 4.0, but it called uh, uh, it was called Industry uh, 4000, I 4000, believe. Yeah, 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 and it was really it was really a good game. That's cool. So, I mean, how do we beat that this year? That you met someone, you've collaborated, and you're working on stuff that you're now presenting this year. What can you possibly hope for from the next Gamification Europe in a couple of weeks' time? Well. Um, Probably this question relates to some other uh, future questions that you may ask us now. I don't know how we're doing with time, but I'm just looking at some of the talks here. And uh, one that really caught my attention, and I have to say, the moment I saw it, I stopped looking for uh, something that will catch my attention was the mixed reality um, and simulations um, game worlds, the virtual learning environments. Uh, that sounds fascinating, super, super interesting. So. And, and I also like the fact that uh, yourself and your team, how you have split the days by, by topics. So the, the first one is education. So, uh, you know, thank you for putting education at the, at the start. So for me, that's uh, what we should be looking forward to. And what I will particularly, sorry, will be looking forward to. And, but also to, to see what other industries are doing, because there is also the opportunity to learn from other industries and apply their lessons learned into gamification for education. Fantastic. What about you, Ola? So after last year, Gamification Europe, we managed to create a team to, to make some, some project. So maybe this year we will create a bigger community of uh, people interested in gamification in Poland. And this is why I'm interested and I'm waiting for the speech of uh, Adam Pushtai. I hope I pronounce it well, um, because uh, I, I found out that he will um, he will talk about how to create a, a community by using gamification. And I believe that um, it is something which is important for each gamification implementation. So I'm really waiting for, for his conclusions. That's fantastic. Also, his target audience, he was building a gamification community in Hungary. 
So if you want to do the same in Poland, I'm guessing there's some good learnings there. Yeah. Definitely. Well, that's fantastic. Thank you so much for your time today, both of you. I have to say I'm really looking forward to the talk. Um, thank you and see you in a couple of weeks. See you, Pete. Thank you for the opportunity and really looking forward to the whole event as well. Yeah, thank you very much.